Namaste, good morning, and thank you for joining. So as always, please practice according to your condition and ability levels. If you know the variations, feel free to explore them. If not, please modif- otherwise please modify and um, be respectful of your limitations. So on that note, let's begin the practice. Close the eyes, go inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are everywhere. your mind on God alone. everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice to our senses may we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other
only peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Now let's do the mantra for purification three times. If you know it, you can do it with me. If not, just pretend you're singing it through the voice of the Guru and you derive all the benefits as though you were singing it perfectly. And you get all the, the benefits of the purification of this space, the ground, and all the psychic channels within. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabaya Bihantra Ha Sachihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabaya Bihantra Ha Sachihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sabaya Bihantra Ha Sjihi So now let's do some pranayama. So we're going to do alternate nostril breathing and let's try to do it with uh, breath retention. So we'll do a Shivananda style, which means that there's no set rhythm. Uh, for this style, there's no set rhythm. You can just try to get the inhales and exhales to about the same duration and length, and the hold, the breath retention, is as long as you can do it comfortably. So don't do it to the point where when you breathe out, it's like a big explosion. You still have to have the nice steady control of the breath as the breath leaves the body. So. Um, we'll do it together a couple of times and just pretend you're holding the breath as long as uh, as, um, as long as you can whether it's too long whether it's too sh uh, whether it's not long enough just pretend just go um, stay in the collective mind left hand in this uh, yana mudra second finger and third uh, and thumb connected other three fing three fingers extended on the left knee right hand second and third fingers fold down towards the palm and then turn the palm towards you the right thumb for the right nostril, the right ring finger for the left nostril. So for the breath retention, you're closing out both sides of the nose. To prepare for the breath retention, you want to lift the chest as much as you can through the inhale so that when you, ex when you hold the breath, you just bring the chin down without hunching your back. Keep the back very straight. Bring the tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth and bring the attention to the space between the eyebrows. And then for the root lock, Imagine you're lifting the whole pelvic floor up and in. So imagine you're trying to push the pelvic floor up towards the navel and squeeze that tight. Okay, so as the exhales again, as I said before, do it evenly and try to coordinate so that you, um, you're completely empty by the end of the exhale. Okay, so let's begin. Sing up tall and straight. Breathe out completely. Empty the lungs. Then close off the right side with the right thumb. Inhale through the left. Raise the chest, then hold the breath. Third eye attention, bringing chin on the chest. Remember the throat, the, the, close the throat by bringing the tongue to move the mouth behind the teeth as well. And lift the pelvic floor muscles up towards the navel. Keep holding your attention at the space between your eyebrows during the breath retention. Now pretend you held as long as you can. Exhale out to the right. And deal completely and gradually. When you're completely empty, fill up again. Inhale. Raise the chest. Hold the breath again. Jalandara Bandha, Mula Bandha, Throat Lock, Root Lock, Third Eye Attention. Everything stops here. All the mind fluctuation, take to be the mind, the emotions, body completely at a standstill. I'll pretend again that it was your full breath retention. Exhale out through the left slowly. Release the locks. An empty inhale again. Through the left side. Hold the breath, chin on the chest. Keep your attention at the space in the eyebrows to attract all the prana there, all the vital force. Good. 
track the root muscles up towards the navel. The energy that you force up there stays up there through your tension, through those locks. Exhale out through the right, slowly, under control. Inhale again, through the right. Hold the breath now. Watch the space between the eyebrows. Everything stops. A little time sits still. Exhale out through the left side, slowly. Again, inhale. Hold the breath. You may do go on your own now. Hold the breath longer if you can. Watch the body through the exercise. Remain unconcerned, undisturbed like the witness who's observing everything. Merge the supreme witness which is within. That is to say, God who resides in the spiritual heart in the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart. Always he's there, guiding. Always present in all beings everywhere. If you lose your concentration and mind starts to wander, be unconcerned, undisturbed, unjudging. Just try to keep your mind, bringing your mind back over and over again, back to the task at hand, the pranayama. Eventually the mind will become tame and be able to rest fixed on something for a long period of time. ultimate goal is to have the mind always on God, the divine essence that resides within and all around. No you, no me, no distinction, no differences. All the same, all cut from the same cloth, the divine cloth. And all worthy of love as a result. going. Repetition is a key to success. So this technique, just like the postures, requires patience, requires perseverance in order to adhere to it. And then you reap the benefits. But have no expectation or attachment to the, result, the results. Do it because it must be done. Next time you breathe out of the left side, conclude. Don't rush it, even if you're at the very beginning of the cycle. Go through it as you should. And when you're done, whenever that is, Sit quietly, both hands in Yana Mudra on the knees. And just take notice of any changes in the state of the body, the mind, and the emotions, again, without any judgment. 
be the witness, continue to be the witness. It remains undisturbed. When the mind is undisturbed, is able to see things more easily with unconditional, boundless love. The mind is quiet and serene. Now let's just try to find that serenity in all the poses, emerge with all the forms, put yourself in their shoes, in their bodies, in their consciousness. Try to imagine where they find the ease, where they're at ease, and you too will ultimately eventually find the ease as well as you practice. So now on that note, let's begin, come to standing. So starting off with spiritual breathing to establish a deeper connection with the divine. Bring the arms up, the palms slightly turned up. From the fingertips, imagine you're pulling in the best of the best from the universe down through the arms and into the spiritual heart. Feel yourself being flooded right through the arms and into the spiritual heart, located in the center of the chest, right side of the physical heart. Now hold it there, hold the breath at the spiritual heart. Exhale, everything they pulled in stays in there and just the breath leads back out through the arms, the same path out. Inhale again, pull everything you need down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Two, three, four, continue, feel it flooding in. Six, seven, eight, holding at the heart, hold the breath. Four, five, six, exhale out through the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last time, pull in everything that you can manage, that you can need, every, all the qualities you're trying to cultivate even more. Feel yourself being inundated by it. And pull it all into spiritual heart, hold the breath, hold the attention there to keep it there. Exhale out through the arms while that all stays in, just the breath leads back out. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now bring the arms down, we'll continue with some exercises. Now start to move one of the sides to the next. Allow the arms to slap against the body with their heavy ropes. Again, just imagine the Supreme Witness is watching, so try to deliver the best, the best, most beautiful practice you can imagine. Visualize yourself doing it. And then from here, hands to the hips, start to circle the head. Shoulders and ears come together as the head goes around, the chin to the chest, back the head to the top of the back. And then circle the head the other direction. Try to see the floor all the way around you as the head moves around. And now conclude the right arm circles forward. Feel as though you had a weight in your right hand to allow the arm to swing more easily with that weight. And then go in the other, other direction now, winding up like you're about to throw a ball. You can always use your left hand to support the shoulder if you need to. Okay, now go forward again. And back. And then the left arm forward. Loosen up the shoulder completely and then go back. Forward again, a few more times, and back. Just try to increase your mobility through constant movement of the joints. Move them in every way possible. Arms up over the head, take hold of the elbows, and then lean to your left. Go to the right now. Try not to make full to the inside of the body at the waist. Go to your left. Go to the right and come back to the center and release. Bring your arms up over the head, inhale, exhale, throw the body down on your thighs. Release tension, release, imagine releasing all negativity as well. 
Just throw it out on the body. One more, just stay down. Allow the head and the body stop shaking and bouncing. And then roll your way up. Next one's called lion's breath. Pretend you're pouncing like a lion. The eyes go wide, the tongue hangs out of the mouth. So it's another good one to just bring out your inner child and just be fierce and playful. So as you come into squat, you don't have to go down all the way. Just go down to the level that you can according to your knees. If you like, you can hold on to um, a wall or a chair and then just swing the right leg back and forth. Lean forward a little bit. Try to bring your knee right to the shoulder. So you might be able to get your forehead right to your shin, your shin to the forehead. Throw back as though you're about to kick yourself in the head from behind. And then the other leg, just switch sides. arms up over the head, press the heels and palms up, inhale, lift up off the heels, and back down, rock back on your heels, inhale, lift up off your, uh, on your toes, and back down, engage the leg muscles in the core, come up, and back down, press up, this time stay up, imagine trying to push the ceiling right through the roof, get taller and taller, lower the heels down. And release. One last one, just shake your wrists. Move your fingers very, very rapidly, like they're out of control. You can't even, they're just moving so fast, you can't even see them moving, they're like a blur. And then up and down. Good. And now let's come to the front of the mat. Surya Namaskara. Bring the hands to the heart. And remember, come back always or always stay in the intention of offering. Imagine this as your divine obligation to all beings everywhere. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back, arch back as you see fit. Then fold down, bend your knees if you need to, to bring your chest on your thighs, your head, head, head down and your hands down. Right foot back, lower down the knees, sink down to the seat. Push the seat in and then into high plank. Lower down the knees, the seat all the way back behind the heels. Glide forward between your arms now. Pull at the floor like you're trying to pull the floor towards you into cobra. And then all the way back again, two more times. Pull the seat back and slide forward between your arms. Roll the shoulders back, make the chest large. Take the uh, head back one more time. The seat all the way back on heels. Glide forward smoothly between your arms. Rise up gracefully. Roll over your toes, Adho Mukha Siddhanasana. Lift the seat up and back, melt the heart, allow the heart to fall towards the ground. Then look forward, bring the right foot forward. If that's too difficult, you can lower the back knee down. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, use your right hand to slide the foot forward. Again, push your seat in, shoulders back. And then the feet come together, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up. Extend up, arms over the head. Hands back to the heart. Engage your buttocks and your upper back as you reach up and back to support you in a movement. And then pull the body down. Fold the body in half, chest on the thighs, head down. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Have your hands on the ground. Left foot back, lower down the knee and the seat. Come into high plank. And the knees down, the seat all the way back. Glide forward between the arms again. Smoothly raise the head all the way back. Be like a snake creeping through the grass. Brush your nose to the ground. Keep the arms close to the body and rise up. Arch the back. Take the seats back one more time. Glide forward. Let's try to connect the movement seamlessly like you're doing a divine dance of devotion. Shoulders back, head back. Roll over your toes back into downward facing dog. This is all an offering to the highest self. Left foot forward, back knee down, sink down to the seat, modify as you need to. 
to make the pass uh, the uh, the transitions more accessible. Pull the body down onto your legs, head down. Come right up, reach up and back, and then come back. Pranamasana. Raise your arms up. Don't worry about the breath. Just move the way the body in a way that allows you to move in a way that the breath remains steady and even. Right foot back, lower down the knees, sink down to the seat, into the plank. Lower down the knees, the seat all the way back. This time, come forward. As the hips come to your hands, roll over your toes, press into your toes, and lift your hips and knees up off the mat. Upward facing dog. And then, roll over your toes again, downward facing dog. Again, sink the heart, the head comes below the arms. Right foot forward. Back knee down, sink down to the seat. And bring the feet back together, Uttanasana, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. And then return home, hands back to the heart. Always coming back to the source of divine love. Reach up, be powered by the love. And fold the body down, Uttanasana, head down as though in a gesture of humility. Left foot back, lower down the knees, sink down to the seat. Just again, don't worry about the breath, just move the body, the breath will follow and deliver ease and fluidity to the movement and power. Bring the seat back, start to slide forward, and as the hips come between your hands, lift your hips and knees up off the ground. Shoulders back, head back, and downward facing dog. Roll over your toes, melt the chest towards ground, soften the line of the back. Left foot forward, back knee down, sink down to the seat. Feet come together, Uttanasana, chest and the thighs, head down. Come all the way up to standing. Hands back to the heart. Bury your mind deep in the heart, watch why move with even more steadiness, grace and ease. Fold the body down in half. Good. Now from here, bend your knees. Land your belly on your thighs, join the hands behind the back. Push the chest forward towards the knees. And then dive down. The top of the head coming towards the feet. Your body pushing into your legs. If you're flexible, maybe your legs straighten all the way. Imagine your chest going even beyond your knees and the top of the head touching the feet. Arms over the head here. And now bring the hands down. Right foot back. Back knee stays lifted. Good. And then into high plank. This time if you can, bring the seats back. Keep the knees up and then you have to push into the roots of your toes, pull the elbows towards the body, push into the hands, swing right through. Try not to touch your knees and the hips to the ground. If you can't do that, just lower your knees down and slide through as we did before. Upward facing dog. Now here, just take a moment to just push the into the roots of your toes, pulse back and forth like you're trying to fold the body in half, the hinge at the tops of the legs. Make like a dog howling at the moon, bring your nose up, shoulders down. Make sure there's no big line across the lower back or the back of the neck. Pull the body by the hips. And now press into the roots of your toes, tuck your chin in, lift the seat up, and then downward facing dog here. Now, melt the heart, bounce, try to get your chest closer to the ground, the top of the head, maybe to the ground. Try not to bend your arms. Think of a slide at the playground and make the shape of that slave, that slide. Steep at the top, shallow at the bottom. Or like a course, the name suggests a downward dog, like a dog stretching its back. Now exhibit the loyalty of the dog to its master, some of those beautiful divine qualities that we find in all forms. They're within you. You just have to turn them on. Now from here, look to the hands, bring the right foot forward, back knee stays lifted, keep the back leg strong. And then vault to the foot forward, to the front foot, chest on the thighs, bend your knees again. Glue your belly to your legs, and down we go, Uttanasana. Bring the seat up over the heels. Eventually, may the hands will come right from the head, closer to the ground. And from here, release. Come all the way up to standing, reach up and back over the head. Come back home, hands in the heart. Raise your arms up both head, reach up and back. Fold down, Uttanasana. Bend your knees. From here, separate your feet a little bit more. About feet are about three inches away from the edges of the mat. So options here, take hold of your wrists behind your knees and then just push 
your seat up, push the back knees against the arms. You can stay here, your belly comes between your thighs, you can keep your knees bent if you need to, so your chest, your belly remains between your legs, or if you can, you can slide your hands down a little bit further, your elbows down, and see if you can tuck your chin in, and see if you can hold your, cup your hands around your ears, so you might be able to reach all the way around behind your head, interlace your fingers, stork pose, bring your seat up. Again, if you're not ready for this, just do modification. You can also just take the opposite elbows and just slide them down the backs of the legs towards the ankles. Now from here, plant your hands down, left foot back, back knee stays lifted, lift the chest into the plank, bring the seat all the way back, again push the roots to your toes, pull the elbows right to the sides of the body, push through the roots, the heels, your palms, the roots of the fingers and the finger pads into upward facing dog, however which way you can make it. And from here, transition to downward facing dog, we'll do a few here, or even just one if this is what's more suitable to you. Round your back so you're pushing your heart between your shoulder blades. And then forward, right through the center of the chest, back the other way. Round your back, tuck the chin in, and then melt the heart, downward facing dog. One more time if you can. Roll over, uh, roll forward. Uncoil gracefully. Then coil back in, tuck your chin in. Again, get the sensation you're pushing your heart right between your shoulder blades, and then down towards the ground. Make again like the dog was loyal to its master. So you might be able to get the nose or the chin even to the ground if you're very flexible. And then lift the head, bring the left foot forward, back knee stays lifted, push out to the back heel. And send the feet together, Uttanasana, chest on the thighs, head down. Come all the way up to stand, reach up and back over the head. Come back home, hands on the heart. Raise your arms up, reach up and back. And pull the body down onto your legs. Lift hand, chest, press into your hands, hold your breath, and jump or walk back into Chaturanga. Through into upward facing dog, modify if you need to by coming into Cobra. Press into the tops of the feet. Head downward facing dog, lift the seat up and back, melt the heart down. Now again, raise, come forward, lift the heels, bend the knees, look between your hands. Hold the breath and bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. And raise your arms up over the head again. One more time. Fold down. Uttanasana. Now here you have a choice. Move your toes back behind your wrists a little bit. And then lift the heels, shift your weight forward. Try to get your shoulders over the fingertips. Keep your arms strong. Really push into the ground with your hands. And then, or if you like, you can see if you can lift up into tuck. Hold your breath, press down, and bring your seat up over your wrists. Okay, so three times. If you want, you can extend your legs. And then back into chaturanga. Those who know how to do it, go ahead. Otherwise, back into chaturanga. Through into upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Again, here are choices. You can just roll forward, rounding your back into plank, and then sink your seat all the way back behind the heels. So just do this kind of like leapfrog action. Otherwise, if you want, you can also press down through the base of your fingers, the finger pads like you're gripping the wall like an insect. Belly to your thighs, hold your breath, and see if you can lift your seat up over your wrists three times. And then, land your feet at your hands. Jump forward, pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to stand and reach up and back over the head. Return home, bring the hands to the heart. From the heart, inhale up to the space between your eyebrows. Hold your breath there, imagine all the love that you sent up there is now going out to all beings everywhere, send it out. Exhale back down to the heart. Remain established in the hearts of all beings. And release, hold all beings in your heart. Now come back to the middle of the mat. We'll do some balance postures now. Standing on your left foot first, take the right foot by the heel, flex the foot, and bring the leg out to the side. 
try to have your fingers and toes on the same line. So it might look like a T shape. Be more flexible. Pull your leg up higher. Lean to your left a little bit so your toes and fingers again stay at the same height. This is too much. You can hold underneath the knee, but still keep on extending your inner leg muscles. Press through the inner foot. Okay, if it's too much to um, straighten your leg and keep your knee bent, but just do your best. If you're having trouble balancing, just lean against the wall, back against the wall. Good. Now, for those who want, engage leg muscles, hold the breath, let go of the foot, try not to let the foot drop. This is the natural tendency, the leg will fall about a foot, but try not to let it fall. And then bring the leg down smoothly. You have to keep the leg muscles engaged, so try it on the other foot. Press down through the right foot, raise the left foot. Take hold of the inside of the heel, and one graceful gesture, take the leg out to the side. Like a dancer, be poised, be graceful. If you're more um, uh, familiar with the pose, lean back a little bit, look up. Flex your foot, it helps the balance. And then if you like, again, hold the breath, engage leg muscles. Let go of the foot without dropping the foot. And then bring the leg down softly. Okay, so now I'll move to the back of the mat. A few different options here, and a nice sequence here. So we're gonna start off, actually let's move a little bit closer to the middle of the mat. Rest your belly on your thighs, index fingers on the ground. Slide your right foot back, raise your right knee up, all the way up. And then from here, hold your breath, keep gazing at the ground, and float your fingers up off the ground if you can. Take your arms up. So your hands are over your shoulders. Your head is close to the ground, height to the knee. Those who want, you can extend the leg. Arch the back if you can, interlace your fingers, open up, keep the palms open. Pull your arms over the head, you have to fall towards the toes a little bit. Good. Now from here, press into your left foot, hold the breath and come up. Now if you need to, you're losing the bounce, can you take your foot down, your toe down to the ground? Otherwise, open up and into angel pose. Push your chest forward, the arms go back, and bring your head back. Make like you're offering yourself up for service to God. Raise your right leg up high if you can. And then release. Again, tap into the consciousness of each pose. With the heart open, it's like opening yourself up to divine grace, surrendering. So try again on the other foot. So you're standing again. Your belly on your thighs, your index fingers to the ground. Slide your left foot back and then raise your left knee up as high as you can. Point the toe so it looks pretty. Keep your head close to the ground. Keep your eyes fixed on a point and then hold your breath. Take your fingertips up off the ground. Eventually, Keep gazing at the, ground, at the ground in front. The arms come over the head, right over the shoulders. You can stay here, of course, or extend your leg, top leg tree. You can interlace your fingers. If you can't um, um, hold your hands, you can just keep the arms out to the side, more like a gliding eagle. Just whatever you're doing, just try to picture the shape in your mind, the form and realize to the best of your ability. Just imagine yourself in the form. Arch the back, bring the head forward, left foot higher than the head. And now press into the right foot and come up. Hold the breath. Separate your hands. Again, if you, can, if you need to, you can bring your left toe on the ground. And then pull your arms out. Open up the arms like great wings of an angel. And bring your head back. and then bring the palms, bring the foot down. Good. So one last one. This one can be a little bit challenging. 
So there's an option for this one as well. Bend your knees and bring the right knee up to the chest. Hold on to the ankle or the heel. Now you have to push into your toes. Edge your feet, bring your hips back and push your leg, your foot out in front. It doesn't have to be high, the height of the knee, of the hip. And if you can, you can try to bring your belly on your thigh. Your chin to the shin. If you need to, you just keep your knee bent so it looks like this if you can't get your legs straight. And then bring it back down. From here, come back up. Good. And then prepare for the other side now. Bend your knees. Take hold of your left, bring your left knee up. Okay, and then from here, you have to press the edge of the feet, grip through the toes, and if you can, extend the leg, you have to push your hips back. Rest your belly on your thigh, hug your forearms to your leg, and bring your forehead on your shin eventually. Break the pose, bring the foot back down, Press into your thighs and come up. Okay, so from here, walk your feet out, just release your back a little bit, point your toes out, hands to the seat, easy to cross them up. Bend your knees so your toes, your knees come over your toes. Push your hands into the seat and pull down. Again, keep your knees bent as much as you need to. Keep your weight really heavy on your feet, in the edge of the feet. Outer edge of the feet and then for those who can, who want, you can slide your hands down the backs of your legs. Holding just underneath the knees and then with your heels, your palms just underneath your knees, you have more control here. Roll the thighs outwards, roll the shins in at the same time. The thumbs come further through. And then, so you can push your hips forward and up to straighten your legs. But keep the, the thighs rolling outwards, the shins rolling the opposite way. From here, hands back onto the back, on the seat, one at a time. Push into the seat, pull down, and come back up. Good. Now from here, stand in the middle of the mat, facing out of the long edge of the mat. We're going to go to the left first, so if you're facing away from the, the screen, you can't see it, just turn around. Fingertips in line with the elbows, or shoulders, and then bring your arms out. Turn to your left now. Turn your left foot forward and move deep into the pose. Drop the hip all the way down as far as you can. So the knee is over the toes and when you swing your right arm down, maybe your fingertips can touch the ground. Strong and steady true lines like the warrior's intentions. Always to protect, to serve without hesitation. Bring the right arm up to meet the left. If your hip is still turned to the right, you can lift the back heel up. So you can square off your hips. Try to get low again. Stay low. The knee is just a few inches from the ground. The head is all the way back. Gesture of abject surrender, devotion. Good. Now from here, back into warrior two. Join your hands behind the back. And now pull the hands down, lift the chest. And from here, you have to lift, push into your left foot and pull the right hip back a little bit, roll the thigh outwards, move your body to the right. Humble warrior, so you can get your forehead to come to the ground. If this is too much, lower the right knee down. If you can't get your head to the ground, it's, it's too intense, and again, move according to your condition. You have to keep pressing through the feet if you're doing a full stance to stay in balance. Then break the pose, lift head up off the ground, bring the right knee down. So from here, bring the left hand to your left knee, right hand slide to the foot. If you can't get to the foot, you can stay on the just back of the leg close to the knee. Lean away from the leg. Good. So option here, you can stay here, bring the left arm up. So like an exalted warrior. If you know the swan pose, you can go ahead. You bring the right foot up, close to the shoulder. 
reach across with your left hand so you can place the foot in the elbow joint a little bit more easily. Lean towards the foot so your fingers come close to the ear and then I like to bind with your hands, lock your fingers, tuck your chin in, lift the wrist and then bring the arm to the other side and then you can do the swan. Push the foot away from the shoulder so you don't have a big sharp fold in the right arm. Now if this is too much, you can stay here or you can turn all the way forward, Kapyasana. So whatever expression of Kapyasana or variation you like. Shoulders back, make sure you don't bend your arms. Stay true to the form of a crescent moon. Flatten out the toes, the toes and fingertips are pointed. Now bring the body back up. Hands to the inside of the left foot. Push your hip back and pull the left foot out. I'm going to do it this way as you can see. You move the foot out to the left edge of the mat and then fall to the right. See so if you can get your forearm down and the hip down. And then roll back to your left. Try to get um, your both hips anchored down more or less the same uh, height from the ground. The knee stays close to the shoulder. You don't want this to happen, nor do you want this to happen. Okay, so you want to have Again, both sides of the seat down, and then keep telescoping your chest forward. The more you reach forward, the more the body comes close to the ground. If you're very flexible, you can bring your elbow to the outside of the foot and try to get your chest on the ground. When the hips are anchored down, the rest of the body follows. Eventually, the back is lower than the knee. Be like a lizard sunning itself on a warm earth. And now come back up. Aldo Hanumanasana. Move the left foot in a little bit more to the center line. Lift the toes and drape your body down onto your front leg. Maybe the, sh the shoulder will be right beside the knee. Maybe the forearms will come down for some of you. Try to get your top of the head close to the foot in front of you. Now you can stay here. Those who want to go to Hanumanasana. The full pose, lift the chest and hinge your seat forward. And then start to press into your fingertips and slide your left foot forward. So if you slide the foot up off the mat, it might give you a little bit more ability to go a little bit deeper. Press to the base of the toes and the back foot. And then just pulse up and down. Always mindfully, don't go to a place of pain or suffering or anxiety or distress. This is not what you want to transmit. If you're all the way down, you can do variations, you can lift your arms up. And then express all the qualities of Hanuman, the devotion above all the faith that anything is possible, the courage. And from here, break the pulse. Now push into your fingertips, lean forward and bring your foot back. Your legs now are like a box. Your left leg at a 90 degree angle, bend the toes under on the back foot. Raise your right arm up. Anchor the leg in place with the right the left hand and then bring the right arm down to the outside. The arm is sitting on the outside of the knee. Left hand pushes in the right, either a flat hand or a fist. A fist is sometimes easier so you can get more pushing action. As you push the left, a hand down into the right, the belly comes up higher in the thigh, and then you start to roll to the left. Try to get the center of the chest right behind your thumbs, left shoulder goes back. If you want to try to take a bind, move your seat back, use your left hand to guide the elbow so that the hand can go underneath the leg. If you push your seat back to give more space for the hand to sneak under. Left arm goes over the back, pull the hand out from of, um, underneath further, and then you can take your left wrist with your right hand. Keep pulling the left shoulder back until it's in line with the other one. Same height from the ground almost. And then perhaps hold your breath and take your right knee up off the ground. Do it slow with control. If you move too fast, you lose your balance, or you have the chance to lose your balance more easily.
Then from here, move your hands back. I should turn this way. Move your hands back to the inside of the foot. Spin around to the long edge of the mat and come back up. Go to the other side now. Arms out to the side. Go to the right. Turn yourself around again if you need to. Long, straight lines. Come forward with a sense of purpose. Good. Now swing your left arm forward to meet the right. Vita Bhadrasana one. Head back. Express all the qualities of a warrior. Good. Then from here, back to warrior two. Take your hands behind the back. Pull the hands back, lift the chest. Open up the right knee a little bit. Make sure it's not falling in like this. Okay, so try to push the knee out so that when you go down, you go to your left and your shoulder can slide to the inside of the foot and you can come down a little bit more without less restriction. You want to push the left hip back a little bit as well and roll the thigh outwards. Again, if you want, lower the back knee down to the ground. Try to get your head to the ground. A gesture of abject humility. Surrender. Humbleness. Then release the hand, bring the right foot down, and the right, right knee down. Right hand to the right knee, slide your left arm back towards the foot, or stay close to the knee. You can just stay here, lean away from the front leg, and take the right arm up if you like. And from here, other variations as you see fit. Maybe the swan, taking the foot up again, make sure the knee's a little bit in front the body so that the foot can come up more easily. So it's, if it's behind you, it's a little bit more difficult. So try to get so the foot can be a little bit in front of the shoulder and take your fingers into a bind, lift the wrist and push it over the head to the other side. Push the elbow back, uh, the, uh, the foot back from the shoulder, open it up. Or Kapiyasana, turn forward, arms back. Lift the body up by the hips. Imagine your index fingers go to the back toe. Now break the pose, come back up. Press into the front knee. Actually, um, I meant lizard actually, right? So bring your right foot out and then <clears throat> lean to your left. Try to get your left hip and the left forearm to come down. If you're tight in the hips, and you can't get your hip down at all, just bring your hands, come stay on your hands, but just keep dropping your hips. Think of a cobra pose. You're trying to get your hips to come down. Sink down. Imagine they're very heavy. Of course, if you're more flexible and your forearms are down on the ground, left forearm and left hip, the left hip is down, roll to the right. The right forearm comes down, the right side of the seat comes down, and then keep on creeping forward. Imagine you had rocks in your weight in your hip pockets weighing you down. Perhaps this will allow you the visualization to drop your hips even more. Anchor them to the ground, the rest of the body will follow. Now come back onto the hands. Push your seats back so your hips are over the back knee. Walk the right foot a little bit more to the middle. And then lift the toes, bow to Hanumanasana, bow to the leg, belly on your thigh. All oh, this, of course, is a gesture of humbleness, lowliness, surrender. If this is too easy, bend the toes under the back foot, come forward, sink your seat all the way forward like you're doing an equestrian pose. Same pose as we did before for it to shape, to come into crescent moon and then start to slide your heel forward. Try to walk your hands back so in line, your shoulders are staying over your hips eventually. In a full pose, your body's upright. And if you can, if your seat is all the way down, take your arms up. You can take your hands, keep your hands on the ground if you like. Express again the devotion and the faith 
but I don't want to. And then from here, break the pose. Press into your fingertips, lean forward, slide the right foot back. Bend the toes under the back foot, come into more upright position. Left arm up, go to the outside of the right leg. The armpit is sitting on the outside of the knee. Right hand pushes in your left and come up. Belly comes higher in the thigh. So you don't want this to happen with your shoulder, your hands at the shoulder. You want to push so that the body comes up and then the body can spin a little bit more easily. Roll the right shoulder all the way back. Let's do this way so you can see. Your chest facing up. And then if you want, take the bind. If you can, sink your seats back so you have more space so you can use your right hand to guide your left arm underneath the leg. Bring the right arm over the back, pull the hand out from a little bit from underneath. Take hold of the right wrist with your left hand. Hold the breath if you can and take the back knee up off the ground. That is again an option. Then you try to look like you're lying on your back. You have to really push through the back heel, straight line from the heel all the way to the crown. Break the pose. Come back with your hands in the middle here. And from here, arms up to the side, come all the way up. From here, jump your feet back together. Stand tall like a mountain. From the base of the mountain, imagine that, that in your body is the base of the spine. Come all the way up, bring the breath all the way up to the crown. Imagine as the summit of the mountain. Exhale back down to the base of the mountain or the spine. Remain unshakable and unmovable in your devotion to the practice, your devotion, your intent to serve. Okay, so now from here, if you feel comfortable, you can fall into plank. So if you have wrist issues or anything, then just come down onto your knees and then make your way into table and into plank. But if you want, you can fall into it. So arms out in front, hold the breath. Come into plank. Now from here, move the left hand more to the center of the mat. Into Vasistasana. Side plank. If you need to, you lower left knee down on the ground. If you want, you can also stack your feet on top of another. Keep your hips up, your arms one line from hand to hand, straight line through the body. Push your hips up, make sure you don't drop into your shoulder like this, don't lose your neck. And then come back to the middle, plank, go to the other side. Right hand moves more in front of the nose. You can keep your ankles crossed, it's a little bit easier. Push the ankles one against the other. Okay, and then hands again. Open up your chest. And then back into plank. Now from here, lower the knees down. Sit either on your heels or between your heels if uh, you don't have any knee issues. And depending on your flexibility, you start to walk back. So you might be able to just, uh, might come down to this level, tilt your, lift your seat, tilt the hips forward. Just keep on trying to walk your hands back. If you can, however, come down lower, come onto your forearms. Some of you might be able to come right onto your back, Sutta Virasana. Then you can take hold of your opposite elbows over your head and stretch from the elbows all the way to the knees or shoulders to the knees. Take a deep breath in here. Raise your chest, feel it ballooning out, up, exhale, deflate, allow the back body to sink into the ground, the belly button to fall right through the body into the ground below. And then from here, come back, press into the elbows, tuck your chin in, and then make your way back up. One more round of Vasti Stasana. So you can do the same one as you did before, or you can try other variations if you know some. I'll just demonstrate a few. You can come into plank to start, and then downward facing dog to get your hips up to start right from the start. 
Move your left hand to the right, spin as you would normally to the right for Vasisthasana. And then slide your right toes back alongside your left knee. And then push the left foot in a little bit. Then push your hip forward as though you're trying to get over the foot or over the knee. Your hip is very high. Again, your left arm is fully extended. Your base of the big toe on the left foot is on the ground. That's important. The toes at 45, the foot's at 45 degree angles, so you can take your right foot up more easily. Right up off the ground. If you can, you can catch the knee or take hold of the foot. Go ahead. Try according to your condition. If you want to do it from your knee, you can even do it from here. And you can even raise your leg up, take hold of the foot. So just do a shape that allow the breath to carry you into the pose. The breath expands you, your body, just like the guru expands your mind, your teacher expands your mind. Good. Now break the pose, come back to plank, go to the other side. Push your hips up first, down the facing dog, and move onto your right hand and right foot. And then just allow your breath to carry through the pose. Slide your left toes back, slide your right foot in a little bit to shorten your base. So you can push your hip all the way forward and up. The higher you get the hip, the more stability you have. Your hip is low, you won't be able to sustain it very long. You'll feel heavy. And then maybe take the knee or the foot. Push into the base of the big toe. Make sure it's not off the ground. It's anchored down. And then from here, release. Come back as gracefully as you entered. Back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Lower the knees down, rest in child's pose. Inhale, exhale, remove all fatigue. Be like a child resting, no cares in the world. Okay, so now, headstand inversions. So if you are comfortable in the pose and headstand, you can go into it right away. I'll, um, you know, if you want to go into Nirandvasana, you can do that as well. So tip, fingertips go out, the forehead to the ground, and then lift the seat. Your hands stay in front, like a wide downward dog, with your hands on either side, on either side of the mat. Walk your feet towards you, raise one leg up. Bend your knee back so that the heel comes close to your seat. Keep pressing into your fore, the hairline, and then you might be able to come up. Even if you don't lift up all the way, even if you just do this, pulse up and down, up off the foot, the, uh, uh, lift the heel up and down, you can do this and eventually press into your fingertips, peel your toes away from the ground. If it's too much, you can do it with your forearms. Sit back on your heels, your elbows are underneath your shoulders, and bring your hands forward. Interlace your fingers, place your head between your palms. And from here, lift up. Bring your feet again towards the elbows. If you feel comfortable, you lift your heels and back down. Try to get your seat right over your shoulders and your elbows. If you can bring your feet closer, you'll have more um, ability to do this. Squeeze the heels, your palms against your head. If your elbows are out to the side, it's harder to balance. So pull them in, elbows again, no more than shoulder width apart. Those you want, bring a one leg back, hang the foot again close to your seat, flex the foot, keep the toes bent back so that you keep your, this hips keep your core engaged, your leg muscles engaged. And again, if you feel comfortable, you can peel the toes up off the mat every once in a while. This is still too much. Forehand from the knees. And just lift your seat. Try to get the hips over the knees. Keep your attention on the space in the eyebrows. Those who are doing headstand, be steady. Even if your body's moving, the mind is steadily concentrated on the space between the eyebrows. The concentration is unbroken. Try to rest your mind on one point as long as you can. it's too much for your head, you're feeling too much on the back of the neck, it's very uncomfortable, you just move your head forward. All right. So 
start to lower down. Those of you who instead stand, come down. Breathe in. Breathe out all fatigue. And come back up. Okay, so now we're going to actually, yeah, actually we're going to take your legs out in front, come down onto our back. So scooch the front of the mat so that your feet are on the toes, your toes are at the edge of the mat and lie down on the back. From here, press into the arms, lift your legs, push into your arms and lift your seat up off the ground if you can. And if you can take your feet all the way behind the head, go ahead and do so. If it's too much to do that, you can just maybe lift your seat up as much as you can, push into your arms and come back down. So strengthen this way, push into your arms, hold the breath and try to get your seat up higher and higher so eventually you're just on your shoulders, most of your back is on the ground. Okay, so do this about five times. If you have your head, your feet behind your head, bring your hands together behind your back, your wrists together, your elbows are close together, pull the shoulders back and then bring your hands onto your back. Raise one leg up at a time, Shavangasana. Take your time to get one foot up very high and then the other one joins it. Your hands to find a straight line, toes all the way to the chin, one line. If your elbows are sort of more beside your body, they're not behind your back, and you need to bend, um, keep your feet a little bit lower, that's okay. Your body will be more like a slant. Eventually, just try to push into the back, push your hips forward, and then your hips will come in line with your toes and your shoulders. Good. If you have a lotus, go ahead. Bring your feet into lotus. If you there's too much still to have any kind of plow pose, you can also just sit on your wrists and your legs are straight up. Okay, so it's a modification. Do according to your condition. Keep your attention on the space between the eyebrows. Advanced practitioners, you can take your hands to your thighs. If you notice, try to push your knees up higher than your hips. You raise up right on top of the shoulders, push your hips forward. Now, Pindasana, if you have a lotus, you can bring a lotus on your body and you can wrap your arms around the outside of the legs and join your hands underneath your seat. This is your Pindasana embryo pose. If you don't have a full lotus, bring your feet behind your head, legs extended, plow pose. And if your feet touch down, you can take your hands to the ground. You can also take your thighs down onto your body, against your body, and then your knees on either side of the head. Squeeze the ears shut, close the eyes, and make as though you're trying to prevent any distractions from coming into those gateways, the eyes and the ear and the, um, the ears. Establish yourself in deep concentration. down, so to slide your legs back down. And when you find, you feel your seat coming onto your wrist, keep lowering your legs down, but stop midway. And once you're midway, hold your legs there, charge them, push into your forms, and lift your, your back up off the ground, so you look like a check mark here. Move your elbows a little bit closer, push your chest forward and your shoulders back. If you can, bring the top head to the ground. If this is too much, bring your legs down. If you want to do flying fish, you can take your hands up from underneath and bring your hands in front, palms together, fingers together, 
in the same lines of legs and now by streak of breath breathe very fast through the nose like a sniffing dog. head where it is if you can bring the feet just on the ground close to the seat edge the feet and line through your hips move your fingertips on either side of the head and here hold the breath pushing the fingertips lift your seat up off the ground slide your head back closer to your feet and then turn your hands around if this is too much do bridge pose now if you're uh, you're in a preparation for Urdhva Dhanirasana here the fingers are spread oriented towards the heels, but then wing down a little bit, and then, if you can, hold your breath, lift your head up off the ground. You can come up off your heels as well, and try to find a nice, beautiful arch. Stretch the whole front of the body. If you know other variations, go ahead. If you want to do drop backs or flip, jump to the other side, whatever you want to do, go ahead. It's your practice, your time to explore very flexible you can try to bring your feet to your hands your hands to your feet I mean you can even try to raise one leg up and then of course you do the other side and eventually one hand stay up if you can and then the other hand and maybe eventually one foot and one, one leg and one arm come up off the ground. A little bit easier to do on the same side. So left, left leg comes up, bring your left hand up, hold the breath, really push into the right hand and bring your right hand to your top of your leg. And of course, do the other side. These are all just options. Raise your right leg up, hold the breath. You wanna walk your hands a little bit closer if you can. Gives you more steadiness. Hold the breath, come off, off, all but just one index finger, and maybe take your hand onto your thigh. And then back down. It's for events, as Dharmaji says, for professionals, those who are teachers or advanced practitioners, you can try it if you like. Always be mindful of your limitations. Now come back down. And then from here, stretch out your legs. Breathe in, hmm. breathe out, imagine you're fainting, let go of all fatigue, all effort. Now from here, raise the right leg up. If you need to, you can slide your left foot in a little bit, take hold of the ankle and pull your knee onto your shoulder. Then from here, pull on the leg, try to get your foot closer to the head. Now at this point here, if you want, you can straighten out your left leg, if you can. But keep your knee bent and foot flat if you have very tight hamstrings. If you're very flexible, you can try to bring your foot right down to the ground. Beside your head, your leg comes right just beside your shoulder, outside your shoulder. And from here, bend your knee, half happy baby pose. Your heel is over the back of the knee in one line, vertical line. Again, you can slide your left foot in if you need to. And if you want, you can even bring your leg across the chest, leg pigeon pose. You can see if you get your foot to the crook of the arm, your shoulder, your elbow is starting right underneath the knee and then pull the full leg up. The shin comes, uh, the foot eventually on the same line as the knee, close to the collarbone, right on top of the heart maybe. Good, now from here, take the right foot back, half happy baby pose. Those you can, can bring the right shoulder in front of the leg. So just imagine I'm lying on my back here. I use the back of the arm to come onto the back of the knee like this. Okay, and then eventually you want to try to, if you want, more flexible, you can try to bring your foot behind your head. So you push into the back of the knee, remember I'm still on the ground, and push the knee up so it's about the height that the knee comes close to the ear. 
You have to lift your shoulders up off the ground, tuck your chin in, pull the foot to your left, and then the foot will come more easily behind your head. Okay? If you need to, you bring your left knee in to your shoulder like a tuck. And then you can just wiggle your way into it. So it'll look like this. Raise your right hip up. Bring the left knee up to the chest, the uh, shoulder. And then you just keep on wiggling around. Push the foot back behind you. Pull the foot to the left. And then maybe your left, your foot comes behind the head. Those you can get both feet up behind your head. And go ahead and do that as well. So if you're doing that one, you pull both feet up. Like you're about to go into plow. Lift your seat up. Cross your ankles. Push to the backs of the shoulders, into the backs of the knees, and send your feet, your head through between your legs, your, your legs. And then you can either keep your hands in prayer in front or join your hands underneath your back. Try to bring your feet to the ground, your knees to the ground. Okay. Now, release. If you're in full yoga nidrasana, stay there. Otherwise, you can do the other side now. Take your left leg up now. Bring your bend your knee. Bring your knee to the shoulder. Actually, if you're in yoga nidrasana, it might be nice to do this as well with us. So come back out. Bring the left leg up again. Slide your right foot in if you need to. If you're very tight hamstrings, pull on the ankle. Try to get your leg closer to the head. And then, again, very flexible. You can try to bring your leg right to the foot, right ground beside your shoulder. Your knee is in the armpit. Half happy baby pose, bend the knee. Take hold of the sole of the foot and push the knee down, the thigh down onto the ground, just on the outside of the body. You can stay here or bring your foot across the chest for pigeon pose, upside down pigeon. Your foot, try to get in line with the knee. If you have very tight, uh, if you have tight hips or tight hamstrings, your foot might come closer to the hip. That's okay. If you bring your elbow underneath your knee a little bit and push the whole shin up, you might be able to get your leg right on the chest, right over the top of the heart. Then again, if you want, back to half happy, half happy baby, and bring the left shoulder now in front of the knee, the back of the knee. Push your knee up higher, so you have to raise your left side of the seat, left hip a little bit. Bring your right knee right into the shoulder, and then peel your shoulders up off the mat. Push the foot. If you push in the back of the knee, you might feel strain your leg. Pull the foot back behind you a little bit more towards the ground. And then pull your foot to the right so you can get your head in front of your foot more easily. You can again cross both feet behind your head if you like. Modify as you need to. Work progressively. These poses, as Damaji says, is nothing to suffer the realization, but they help to cultivate compassion by just trying to find yourself in a form and seeing all the divine qualities, seeing how God manifests in each form so uniquely and beautifully. Then the posture become more meaningful. But the poses are done to help you remember that you have to experience everything, you have to pass through all forms and all experiences. Now release the leg. So I do have a very important significance. Now breathe in through the skin, all light and energy. Exhale, flood the body with that energy. Good, and then roll up to see the position. Okay, so from here, cross your ankles. I'm going to, uh, let's see, come onto the belly first. Just 
do a cobra to start. Cross your right, uh, bring your right ankle on top of the left. This keeps your legs together. Remember, tail has no feet, it has a tail. So you don't want to have your feet apart because that doesn't look like a snake. So your feet are together, and then come up. If you need to, you modify. You just stay within your forearms and push your chest forward. Okay, but eventually you can try to lift up, walk your hands closer and closer. Curve the spine. Bring your head back. Try to get your head over the seat. Try not to lift your hips from the ground. And then come down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Cross your ankles the other way. Left foot on top this time. Anchor down to the tops of the feet. And then again, start to roll the shoulders back. Press into your hands. Come up. You can start the hands further away and then just walk them towards you. Try again to keep your hips anchored down. This is not upward facing dog. So your hips are not up like this. Try to push your hips down. Even if you can't bring, come up as high. And then come down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Option here. Danirasana, with your feet apart, or you can cross your right ankle over the left and bring your feet up towards your seat, and then see if you can hold one ankle. So we run the arm across, the right arm, let's say across the front, lift up, take hold of the ankle, and once you have the ankle, with the feet up, you might be able to take out the other ankle easier, and then lift up. If it's too much, you keep your feet apart, and then you. Lift up, you can even keep your thighs on the ground. Concentrate on getting your feet back as far away from your head as possible. But then eventually if you tug on the legs, your feet might come up higher. Eventually you might be able to get your toes right over your head and see them above your head. Rock if you like. Massage your belly, your abdomen. Keep things moving in there. And then release, come down, breathe in, breathe out. Now if you like, cross your ankles the other way, so your left ankle over top this time. I'll press down one arm and then try to take hold of the foot. And once you have the foot, flex the feet, take hold of the other ankle, and then come up. You have to pull on the legs. Can do a regular Danirasana if you like. Lift up. And bring the feet back towards the seat. Release. Breathe in. Breathe out all tension. All reactions that arose, especially of a negative nature, let them all go. So now, one last one, twist, bring your feet, uh, come back to seat position, bring your legs out in front, so from here, bring your feet and your knees together, try not to allow your knees to fall away from one another, right hand down the center of the back, right foot against the seat, left arm up, and push the form against the thigh. Keep pushing actively the elbow against the thigh, vice versa, the outside of the knee. Excuse me, turn to the right. Try not to lean back. Your hand should be right against the seat so that your back stays straight. You're very flexible, so you might know how to get into the bind. So lean your knees towards the right and bring your arm. You keep pressing the left shoulder into the outside of the knee. Bring your left hand underneath the legs. Come beside your seat, and then your right arm comes around. You might need a strap to start. You join your hands beside your seat. Push your knees again into the back of the arm. Keep your back straight. Your upper back, your lower back lifted. Break 
the pose, go to the other side. Left arm right stems to the back, hand against the seat. Right arm goes to the left and then push the uh, form into the outer left thigh. Keep your shoulders down, don't lose your neck. And just try to visualize the spine spiraling much. You can see right through the skin and see the spine spiraling upwards again if you want. Pull your knees down towards the left a little bit so you can get your arm through a little bit more underneath. Your hand ends up beside your seat on the right side and take your left hand around. Try to bind your fingers, lock your fingers together. Keep your back straight, your shoulders open, your chest open in every sense. Feel the whole spine, the whole torso rotating, not just the eyes. Break the pose, lie down on your back. Make your way down gently, no big, hard, fast landings, nice and soft. Once you're down on the back, take a deep breath in. Exhale, imagine you went unconscious. Imagine you fainted, let go of all tension. Imagine the inhale, that you're attracting all the impurities now, whether it be in a physical or mental or emotional plane, to the center of the body. Exhale, drop them right out, be rid of them. The impurities can find a way in perhaps a physical tension, heaviness, feeling of restriction. These are manifestations of some, maybe some blockages of the psychic channels. There's countless number of psychic receptors all throughout the body. And in order to open them up, we have to be in strict observance to the ethical rules. This is where the mental and the uh, spiritual impurities come into play. You have to be in observance of the ethical rules. Be kind and loving towards all beings. Cultivate a deeper compassion so that it extends not just to the friends and the families and pets. To all beings. Treat all beings as though they were God themselves. And then it becomes unthinkable to want to bring any harm or suffering to them. So keep on opening yourself up. With the inhale, just imagine all those psychic receptors opening. So they're like pores, open pores through which you can receive light and energy and wisdom, knowledge, all that helps us to realize ourselves to the fullest extent. Our true nature is infinite, immutable, stainless, it is in fact the nature of God. Eternal. and present in all beings so that infinite being God is everywhere and so are you. You can only go as far as the imagination so keep cultivating a boundless imagination so you can realize more more amazing things they're all ahead of you and all those amazing things share with other beings. All the knowledge helps to remove the patterns that cause suffering and pain. So we must share that knowledge with others.
prepare now to come back from Shavasana. Start to bring awareness back to the body. This beautiful vehicle that you've been given to carry out your mission of spreading the knowledge, spreading the joy and the love to all beings. And set a good example by yourself being a constant beacon of love and peace 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all day, all time, all the time. Make your way back to seated position now. We'll close the practice with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Instill the peace within, send it out to all beings everywhere. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be receptive to the grace of God, all is within. Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful day. Next Sunday, I will probably have to live stream very early in the morning on Sunday because I have a class to teach and I'm away on Saturday morning. So I will not be able to live stream from where I am. So I will put out the post, but it might end up being like uh, seven, six to 7.30. So you can watch it later if you're not up at that time. Much love. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.